United States Steel Hour, live from New York. Next, a man revisits the scene of the crime and tries to piece together the story of a murder. I'm watching now, it, Mother. nothing elaborate. Just a nice roast suckling pig and a baked Alaska. Oh, you <laughs> never know when I'm fooling, do you? <laughs> no, just some soup and a salad. I'll do better than that. I know you will. All set, Mrs. Fellow? Wouldn't you think that we were going around the world instead of overnight to Sharon? But that's the way I am. I like to make a fuss. Is that a sign of old age? No, I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, goodbye, everybody. See you tomorrow goodbye, night. Bye. What's the big rush to get back? Tomorrow is my bridge club. I wouldn't miss that for anything in the world. Oh, but the place is never the same without you. And without Ronnie, too. We miss both of you when you're mean enough to leave us like this. I adore you all. Hi, Betty. All set to go, Mrs. I Bell. hope so. Taxi's ready, honey. Well, come along, dear. Hurry up. Have you got the tickets? Yes, dear. Well, bye, 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 bye. I bid one spade. I pass. 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 Oh. Okay, to Kibitz, Betty. Oh, not tonight. I have papers tomorrow. Oh, oh I've got to get to the market. Why, oh, the whole oh, oh, Don't tell me that she's forgotten something. <laughs> oh, uh, y yes, uh, can I help you? Uh, my name is uh, Stern. Yes. Uh, John Stern. C can I help you? Uh, the sign out on the lawn there says you have a vacancy. Oh, oh dear. I'll be glad to show the gentleman the room, Mrs. Oh, Pigeon. Oh, Betty, would you, would you, darling? Come in, come in, sir. This is Miss Swan, one of our guests. How do you do? Show him number 15, Betty. That's a lovely room in the front. Oh, uh, I'd prefer a room in the back. You would? I, I don't mind the train noises. Well, then show him number 12, Betty. All right, you go on now. Oh, Hurry yes. up before they run yes, out of I've got to go. Uh, Miss Swan will show you your room, Mr. Uh... Uh, Stern. Yes, it's all ready for occupancy. <laughs> oh, and the room is vacant, so are the key's in the door. <laughs> I don't want to put you in any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. <laughs> We're supposed to be very genteel around here. You'll notice Mrs. Pigeon calls us guests, <laughs> but we all double in brass when the occasion calls for it. It's that kind of boarding house. Your first visit to our fair city, Mr. Stern? Well, not really, no. I was here a while back, many years ago. Did you live here? Mr. Stern? Uh, pardon me. Did you live in this house? Oh, no. No. Mr. Stern, may I present Miss Rose Thompson? How do you do, Mr. Stern? And her sister, Miss Edna Thompson? How do you do? And Miss Price. How do you do? What's happened to Mr. Wells? Oh, he went to get tea. He'll be right back. Well, who did you say? Our solitary male resident, Mr. Wells. Oh. Could we see the room now? <laughs> Here oh. we are. Mr. Wells, Mr. Stern. Oh, how do you do? How, how do you do? Stern? That's right. Have we ever met before, Mr. Stern? Well, that's hardly likely. I was here only once before in my life, a very short visit. Well, I sincerely hope you decide not to stay. <laughs> you see, I've been the only man in this nest of charming ladies for such a long time that I don't relish any competition. Are you a bridge player, Mr. Stern? Oh, uh, I used to play uh, with a lady named Fennel. Does she still live here? You know Mrs. Fennel. Well, 20 Why, years Mr. ago, Stern, I did. She certainly does still live here. She owns Green Mountain House. She'll be back tomorrow night. Oh, will she? Well, I see. Well, <clears throat> could we see the room now? Oh, of course. This way. Well. A very nice young man, I'd yeah, say. A little shy, perhaps. Peculiar, I'd say. Twenty years ago. That would be just about the time of the murder. Uh, what? Oh, uh, what did you all play, Miss Price? Price? The time of the what? Of the tongue, Sarah, pay yes. no mind. Did, 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 did you say murder? Officially, you're not supposed to know anything about it until you've lived here for five years. And you've only been here three. It's the first rule of Green Mountain House. And Mr. Wells has just broken it to pieces. Well, really, I, I, I... Mrs. Fennell won't allow anybody to know about the murder until they're very well ensconced here. 
Well, I think that's perfectly ridiculous. I, I certainly feel I have the right to know. Tell her, Mr. Wells. It's your privilege as the only guest who was resident at the time. Well, 20 years ago, a young woman, a beautiful young woman, was murdered in a room upstairs. Not my room. No, no, no not your room, Miss Price. Not your room. Follow me, Mr. Stern. Not that one, Mr. Stern. That happens to be my room. I thought since this was at the back, this might be the one. No, that's mine. The vacant one is number 12. Mr. Stern? The rooms back here don't get the morning sun. Well, that's all right. And the passing trains do make noise. I don't mind noise. But the front rooms don't have cross ventilation. And they don't have fireplaces. As for the food they serve here, Mr. Stern, you won't find a better cook in Green County than Mrs. Pigeon. Well, I've learned not to be particular about my food. You'd make a good travel agent. <laughs> I'll remember that when my teaching days are over. <laughs> I'll take the room. I don't know what the rates are. Oh, that's all right. Well, welcome to Green Mountain House. Thank you. Dinner at six. Thanks. Oh, uh, I won't be down for dinner. No, I had a late lunch and quite a long train ride. I think I'm due for a nice long nap. Oh, well, we always have a light collation in the kitchen around 10 o'clock, cold cuts. Oh, that sounds good. Will you be at the light collation? No, I'm afraid not. No. This is PTA night for me, Mr. Stern. We have tea and cake and arguments in the high school gymnasium. <laughs> they usually go on till the scandalous hour of midnight. Midnight? Well, tomorrow then. Yes, tomorrow. Have a good nap. Thank you. Fennel should never have allowed sluts in the house. The young lady was an art student. Same thing. What was her name? Grace Brown. And, and she was a very... Where did she live? Oh, downtown somewhere. And what was his name? Keller. Martin Keller. Martin Keller. Welcome to the initiation, Betty. Miss Price is getting the lowdown on our little murder case. How come? She hasn't been a member of this club long enough. Well, old back fence here, he spilled the beans. Well, go Miss on, Thompson. go on, Mr. Wells. Who was Martin Keller? Well, he was a student at the music conservatory. Birds of a feather. And where, in, in what room did he kill her? Well, it was... My uh, room? Your room? Do you mean to tell me that you don't mind living in a room where a murder was committed? Well, I'd lived in that room for five years before I was let in on the hideous secret. By that time, I discovered there were no ghosts to bother me. And I liked it too much to move. Well, anyway, Mrs. Fennell heard these noises one night. All the rest of us were asleep. And she walked in and found Martin Keller standing there with a poker in his hand. The poker was dripping with blood, and that beautiful young girl was just horribly mad. All mad-y. right, all right, Mr. Wells, spare us the details. She was dead. Oh, poor Mrs. Fennell found them. Yes, she testified to that at the trial. Of course, I was a not altogether unimportant witness. I knew the girl not very well, of course, but she was a charming and lovely young thing. And you were 20 years younger at the time. Just what are you implying? Uh, he, he was convicted, Mr. Wells. 20 years to life. But why did he kill her? Well, it seems that, um, well, I mean, after, after the... She was pregnant. Oh. And now you're a full-fledged member of this society. Who's playing it? Good heavens, I couldn't think of playing cards now. Well, another cup of tea, Miss Price. Tea? Uh, the cooking shower is in the cabinet over the stove. I know where it is. Betty, dear, would you play her hand? Now, let me see. The bid is one spade. We each have two tricks, and it's your play. By the way, did he take the room? What? Did Mr. Stern take the room? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, he took the room. He'll be staying with us.
This is the United States Steel Hour. And now, George Hicks. Here's a sight millions will see this summer. It's America's first full-scale monorail system, whizzing passengers from downtown Seattle to the truly fabulous 1962 Seattle World's Fair, where the towering space needle is like a magnet drawing people from all over the world. Yes, they pour in by the thousands every day to Seattle's Century 21 Exposition. And what an exposition this is. 74 acres of displays and exhibits of marvels of the future and treasures of the past, of education and fun. How man will live, work and play in the 21st century. This six building pavilion houses the world of science, the most extensive science exhibit ever assembled. It's sponsored by the federal government and includes United States Steel's participation. Exhibits of the world of commerce and industry show future concepts in travel and communications, manufacturing and services. The boulevards of the world provide a true international flavor. And of course, there's the exciting gateway. And towering over it all, the Space Needle, 60 stories high, which will remain as a permanent Seattle attraction. It was erected by the Pacific Car and Foundry Company and was built largely of a new grade of structural steel called A36, produced by U.S. Steel. Each of the tremendous supporting columns of the needle weigh 1,000 pounds per lineal foot. By using A36 instead of conventional carbon structural steel, the designers were able to save about 10% in the total weight of these columns making it an important advance for modern structural projects. At the top of the columns, 600 feet in the air, visitors dine in a slowly revolving restaurant, which affords a magnificent changing view of Puget Sound, the Olympic Mountains, the Cascades, and beautiful Mount Rainier. At night, the fair becomes a fantasy of lights, color, and music. America is enjoying itself at the World's Fair, and will be every day and every night until October 21st. You and your family are cordially invited. We at U.S. Steel hope many of you will accept and that you'll have a wonderful time. See you in Seattle at the fair. I thought your room was empty. You told me you wouldn't be back until midnight. I only came in here to see if I could remember something, please. I mean you no harm, so help me God. I'm going now. Forgive me. You are Martin Keller, aren't you? Yes. Who, who told you about Martin Keller? Mr. Wells. Oh, I see. You did kill Grace Brown. Oh, yes. There's never been any doubt about that in the mystery. But I'm not here for revenge. Please believe that. No, I killed her. And I've served my penalty. Why didn't Mr. Wells recognize you? That was 20 years ago. 20 years in prison changes a man's appearance. When did you get out? I got out yesterday. And you've come straight here? You are all right, aren't you? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to frighten you. Please forgive me. I'm going. Wait. Please, S sit down.
Why have you come back here? I came back here to see if I couldn't find out about myself. What does that mean? That means... All right, I'll tell you. I certainly owe you that much. Well, her name was Grace Brown. We were both very young. I was all for art and beauty. Goodness knows she was beautiful. She was a young artist. I was the earnest young pianist, and it was the well-known gem-like flame for four or five months, and then it was all over. Why? Well, one afternoon, that afternoon, I, I came in from school into my room. This was my room then. Oh, I was feeling great. I was going to meet my girlfriend, Grace, for dinner. There was a knock on the door. I went to the door, opened it. It was Grace. It was the first time she'd ever been to my room before, so I was very excited. I was very flattered. I thought she couldn't wait to see me, but of course that wasn't it at all. She came to tell me that she was going to be married. She came to laugh at me, really. She came to say that all the time she suffered my adoration, allowed me to put my arm around her, allowed me to put little scraps of poetry in her mailbox. She was making real love with someone else. Oh, no. She'd been using me to make him jealous. Now I've got him, she said. I asked her what she meant by that, and she said that she was pregnant. Did she tell you who he was? No. All she'd say was, it's been nice knowing you, Martin, and goodbye forever. And then you killed her. Oh, no. No, not then. No. I simply walked out and got drunk. And this was the first time in my life I'd ever had a drink. So well, I, I remember starting to drink. That much I remember. And that's the last thing I remember. But it seems I... I came back to the house. I went into the parlor. Now, think of this. I, I went into the parlor and I played the piano. I'm a very theatrical type of killer. Right out of a horror movie. I play the piano before I kill anybody. Well, I must have come back upstairs here. Grace was still here. That must be the way it happened. You keep saying you don't remember any of these things. I remember nothing after I started to drink. Everything that happened after that had to be pieced together. Out of what? Mostly from the testimony of Mrs. Fennell and Mr. Wells and the others. I, I just couldn't remember. Twenty years I've tried to, and the blur of it never gets any clearer. I remember starting to drink. That's the last thing I remember, until I was waking up. Two policemen were shaking me, and I... I was right over there on the floor. They pulled me to my feet. And I saw Grace lying in the bed. Her face had... The police found you? I thought it was Mrs. Fennell. Well, it was. She, she heard strange noises coming out of the room up here, and she came upstairs, opened the door and looked in, and she saw me bludgeoning Grace. I stopped and Mrs. Fennell said, I turned and looked at her. And then I fainted. Luckily for Mrs. Fennell, I suppose, I fainted. But that's when she went and got the police. Well, that's the whole story. That's the story. Except for one thing. Why have you come back? Miss Swan, for 22 years, I, I was a very quiet, very gentle young man. 
I didn't even know the meaning of anger. I wasn't even angry at Grace. I was humiliated and hurt, but I wasn't angry. And then in one incredible moment, for 20 years I've tried to relive that moment and I can't, I, I can't. What was I in that moment, this one? Was I, was I simply a bewildered drunk? Was I a, a frightened boy? Was I a raving maniac? What was I? What am I? What was in my face at that moment when I stood over Grace with the poker in my hand? What was it? Was it, was it horror? Was it, was it lust? Was it insanity? That's what I've got to know. Mrs. Fennell is the only person in the whole world that can tell me this. That's why I've come back. That's why I've got to see Mrs. Fennell. You never talked to her about it? No. From the moment that I was arrested, they never let me communicate with her. But after the trial? Oh, I wrote her a letter from jail, asked her to come and see me. Well, she answered, very nice, very considerate letter, but said no, she simply didn't have the strength. I can certainly understand that. But she'll talk to me now, don't you think? After 20 years, I paid my debt. All I want is information. She will talk to me, won't she? She'll be back tomorrow night. You'll know then. Here we are. Here we are. Thank goodness. Home sweet home. Sweet, sweet. Oh, oh, you must be starved. Ravenous. <laughs> oh, my dear, you've gone and done your Sunday best again. Well, I figured you'd like a good substantial oh. meal. I'll uh, put this in your room later, Mr. Ronnie. Thank you. Will you look at what this woman has gone and done? Darling, there's some nice wine here. Wouldn't you rather have that? Rather have this. Did you have a good time? Was a bloody bore. My bridge date is 8.30 sharp, dear. Supper's coming right up. The Petersons were rather boys, weren't they? Sunday with the Petersons is like a month in church. Well, now, they're very old friends. And they have a daughter. And I thought you'd like her. Now, how can you like anybody with teeth like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was plain, wasn't she? The plainest yet, Mother, the plainest yet. Betty, dear, how nice. Welcome Hi, back. Hi, oh. Betty. Uh, have a drink. Oh, no, no, thanks. Oh, dear. I'm... Sit down and have a glass of wine with us. Mrs. Fennell, to be perfectly honest, I'm not just visiting. I've brought someone who'd like to see you. Where's she hiding? He. Where's he hiding? Someone who'd like to see me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I don't... Martin Keller. Mrs. Fennell, I, I, I don't come with any recriminations, believe me. Recriminations. You committed murder in this house, and you talk about recriminations. Oh, please. Please get, a, get out of this house. Ronnie, make him. Oh, let him talk, Mrs. Fennell. At, at least let him talk. Please, Mrs. Fennell. I, I, I've waited 20 years for this meeting. And all I want is five minutes of your time. Just, just five minutes. I don't want to. Here we are. Here we are. Hello, Mr. Stern. Hello, Betty. Oh, this is the most beautiful roast I've laid eyes on in a long time. And it tastes just as good as it looks. Oh, everybody at dinner just raved about it. Wasn't it good, Betty? It was delicious. Oh, isn't that a beautiful piece of meat? Oh, well, well you'll ring uh, when you're ready for dessert. Special one for you, Mr. Ronnie. Please, Mrs. Fennell. Well, what is it you want of me? I, I want you to tell me, tell me exactly how it happened. Well, I told all that in court. I know, I know. I, I don't want to put you through that ordeal again, but there, there are certain details that I must know about, please. All right. From the beginning? Yes, please. Well... Ronnie had gone out of town on business. 
I had gone down to the station to see him off on the 11.15. I got back to the house about 11.20. When I got back, the house was dark. I thought everybody was asleep. But when I let myself in, I heard the piano. Now, that was very odd. So I tiptoed in. Do you really want to hear this all over again? Please. Well, it was you playing the piano. That dreary old tune, Danny Boy. Then you saw me. And you jumped up. And without a word, you stumbled past me and up the stairs. You were very drunk, Mr. Fenn. Well, no sooner had your door closed behind you than I... I heard you start an argument with someone. Well, I have never interfered in the private lives of my guests. So I went to the kitchen to get my glass of milk. And as I was heating it in the saucepan, I heard the argument growing louder. Well, I finished my milk and I started upstairs. And then I heard a sound. It was a something sound. And it was coming from your room. Well, I went up to your door. The voices had stopped. But the something went on. Again. And again, I, I knocked at your door. I called your name. You didn't answer. So I went to my room and I got the master key and I opened your door. Oh. I think she's told you enough. I'm not going to have her go through all this again. No, it's all right, dear. It's all right. I opened your door and I saw you give her one last blow. I don't know what I would have done if you turned on me. I was, I, I, I was paralyzed. You stared straight at me and then suddenly your eyes rolled right up back into your head and that's when you collapsed. And that's when I ran to my room and called the police. Well, now that you've heard it all over again, are you satisfied? No, no, not on one, no, not on one vital point. What's that? What have I left out? What did you see in my face? What? What did you see in my face? At that split second when I looked at you? Did I seem surprised or, or, or dazed or... The truth? Yes, please. You were enjoying it. You see, I've never understood it. You were always such a nice boy. You never raised your voice. nice, well-brought-up boy like that could, could, could suddenly... Oh, I know you read about these cases all the time, but there's never any explanation. He'd been drinking. Yes, I know, and that is the only explanation. He's just one of those people who cannot drink. Liquor drives them crazy. They, they become homicidal maniacs. There are such people. Sit down, baby. I think you deserve a drink at this point. You've done your good deed for the intruder in our midst. Now, you sit there. Let me get you the special of the house. Guaranteed to drive away all devils. Drinking is for people who can drink. Now, huh, Betty? Do you? No, 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 
leave the bottle. This is the United States Steel Hour. A picnic is a day when it's too nice to stay home. Picnic is taking it easy for an afternoon. Soft drinks and cans go along with that. They're easy to pack, space-saving, light to carry, and quick to get icy cold. A picnic is how good everything tastes out of the picnic basket. Sandwiches and salads, and your favorite soft drinks in cans because cans really seal in every bit of flavor and sparkle. A picnic is playing a little rough. But that's okay with cans. Best of all, a picnic's a day away from your everyday routine. No big meals to cook, no dishes to wash. And with canned soft drinks, no deposit and no returns. Canned soft drinks are easy going for an easy going time of year. Get lots of them to go with you this weekend. Even if you're only going as far as your own backyard. You'd better go to your own room. Oh. Mr. Keller? Come in. What 
do you want now? Didn't I tell you I didn't want to see you again? What did you come back for now? Grace. Haven't you laughed at me enough for one day? Uh. Oh. Who's the father? You could at least tell me. Don't laugh, Grace. Don't laugh at me. That's, that's 10 o'clock. 10? That's the Durham, the Durham Express. That means it's 10 o'clock. Come on, get out of here. You know Mrs. Spindle's rules about guests and stay out. I won't let you in if you knock on the door all night. Swan, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, how did I get in your room? You don't remember? No. I, I went out to the bar and I had a few drinks. Do you remember what happened after that? No. Can't remember a thing. You came back here. You played the piano for a while. I played the piano? And then you came up here, to this room. Well, how'd I get in? I let you in. What time does the Durham Express go by? 10 o'clock. Well, my goodness. I, it's funny I can remember that after all these years, and I... I can't even remember what happened tonight. Twenty years ago, you went out and got drunk. You came back to this room. Shortly after you got here, there was a knock on the door. You opened it to let Grace Brown in. But at 10 o'clock, you ordered her out of here. How do you know that? An hour and a half ago, you walked into this room, drunk, exactly as you did 20 years ago. And you went through that whole scene with Grace Brown. I was here. I saw you. I heard you. You have a very 
tricky memory. Mm. While you're drunk, you have total recall. Mm. And then afterwards, you can't remember a thing that happened to you. Well, what are you driving at? That night, 20 years ago, yeah. you were in this room and drunk at 10 o'clock. But Mrs. Fennell says you went to your room at 11.20. Maybe I went out and came back in again. When you got to your room, Grace Brown was already here. How did she get back in? Could I have let her in? No, no, you couldn't have. Not according to Mrs. Fennell's testimony. Mm -hmm. She saw you walk upstairs at 11.20. Saw you walk into your room. And then she heard the argument. Well, Grace must have been here when you walked in. How did she get in here? Had you given her a key to your room? Oh, no. No. No, I never did that. But she must have had a key. The master key? No, no. Grace wasn't a guest, so she couldn't borrow the master key, but she could have gotten the master key from one of the other guests. Now, who was a friend of Grace's? Someone she could work her charms on. But this is preposterous. Why should I have taken the master key and given it to Grace, Miss Brown? You're accusing me of breaking the house rules and of theft. Well, you knew her, didn't you? Well, I'd met her, yes. She, she used to drop around here every once in a while looking for you. And if you weren't in, we'd have a little chat. Then it was more than a casual acquaintance, Mr. Wells. It was not. It was completely casual. She was a bright, intelligent young woman, and I enjoyed talking Mr. to her. Mr. Wells, please don't pretend that you admired Grace for her intelligence. Yeah. I'm an old man. I'm 72. Yes, and 20 years ago, you were 52. Now, look here, young man. I don't like the turn of this conversation, and I want you out of Mr. here. Mr. Wells, please, don't take offense. You see, the fact of the matter is, besides Mr. Keller, you were the only one in this house who knew Grace Brown. It would be perfectly natural Who said for... so? Said what? That I was the only other one in this house who knew her. Someone else knew her? Ronnie. Ronnie knew her? Well, he knew her a lot better than I did, I'll guarantee that. I saw them downtown once, going into a moving picture show. You s Well, Mr. Wells, why didn't you tell that to the court? Well, nobody asked me. The witness answers questions. He doesn't volunteer information. That would be irrelevant and immaterial. Besides, you were the accused. You were the man on trial. His mother's gone to her bridge game. He'll be alone in his room. He'll never talk to you. You know that. If it's just me, he won't be suspicious. He likes me. I'll wait out here. Come in, it's open. Left it open for you, Mother. Well, well Betty? <laughs> How nice. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in. Uh, mother's off for a bloody little bridge game, but uh, I should be back soon. Uh, uh, th this is a, a purely social visit this time, I hope. Purely social. Good, good. Uh, I'm flattered. Huh? Oh, that was quite a, quite a messy bit of business before, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. Seeing that uh, that fell again, give me the cold shivers. <laughs> You're an easy mark, aren't you, Benny? Stray cats, strangers, things like that. Sometimes. Such a good-natured girl. Yes, indeed. I'm qu quite an easy mark myself. Strangers, stray cats, pretty girls. Like Grace Brown? What? Oh, she was really a beauty, wasn't she, Ronnie? What the devil are you bringing her up for? <laughs> Poor old Mr. Wells. <laughs> Even he was smitten. I remember him telling me once what marvelous legs she had. What a lovely walk. Oh, she was something, wasn't she, Ronnie? How would I know? Well, you knew her. No, I did not. Mr. Wells says you did. He says you used to take her out. How he? Who else said that? In no uncertain terms. Oh, I knew the girl. I met her. Yes. 
And admired her? Okay, I admired her. Of course I did. No man could be impervious to the charms of Grace Brown. Is that why you gave her the key to Martin Keller's room? What? Why, Ronnie? Why did you give it to her? She never asked me for any key. All she wanted was to get me. Did you get married, Ronnie? You get out of here. Were you the father, Ronnie? Get out of here! Well, were you were just one of the leading contenders for the title. I don't know what you're driving at, but you get. What the devil are you still doing in this house? What do you want? Just one small bit of information, Ronnie. Something that never came out at the trial. Why did you take the 11.15 train that night? Why did you leave home at that ungodly hour? Because I bloody well felt like you know you get out of here. Both of you are called police. Why didn't you call Mama? How did it happen, Ronnie? Did she come and tell you you had to get married? That she was pregnant? Did she threaten you? Is that why you killed her? She should threaten. Tell us how it happened, Ronnie. Mother doesn't like me drinking so late. Ronnie? I've been seeing Grace for three months. I sneak around corners to do it. She kept right on seeing him, throw everybody off the track. I was the one she wanted. Exactly how did it happen that night, Ronnie? She came in here, says we have to get married right away. I said, I have to tell mother first. How old were you then, Ronnie? 25. Mother's always helped me make decisions, so I said, all right, when she comes in, I'll tell her. She must be here, Gracie. That that spoil everything. Tell you what you do. You go wait in Keller's room. You know, he, he'll be glad to see you. And she said, all right. And she went down your room. About 10 o'clock. Five minutes later, she's back. She told me you have thrown her out. Also told me you're drunk. In the meantime, mother come in. She's in her room. That's when. Gracie said, if I go in and tell Mother about us, she'd do it herself. After it's all over, I didn't know what to do. But the Body, I mean, um, and remembered she told me how drunk you were. And took master key and opened your door and saw you lying on the floor, dead drunk. Amazing. Carried Grace in your room, stretch around the bed. Put poker in your hands and smeared the blood all over you. Got on eleven fifteen and the rest was up to mother. Where's mother? She's late. And all of your mother's testimony was a lie to protect you. What kind of scum are you? I loved Gracie. I wanted to marry her. Then why didn't you let her go and tell your mother? Why? She did, did go in and tell mother I didn't want her to. Mother has an awful temper. But Gracie wouldn't listen to me. She went in the mother's room and 
told her everything. Where is mother? They don't know. They didn't find out from me. I wouldn't tell them you killed her. You were safe, Mother. They wouldn't get it out from me. I'd never tell them who killed her. You know that, Mother. Mother. On July 11th, the United States Steel Hour stars Barry Sullivan, Zia Moyedin, and Nan Modern in a strange tale of murder that has the killer searching for himself. It's titled Night of the Fourth, produced by the Theater Guild, July 11th, on the United States Steel Hour. <laughs> Cool, that's how you like to get on a hot summer day. Cool, that's how canned soft drinks get in a hurry. They're cool and compact, easy to pack, space saving. Cool and light to carry. Cool and ready to rough it. Cool and full of flavor. Can seal all the good taste in tight. Cool and convenient. No deposit, no returns, no fussing. Get your favorite brands of soft drinks in no return cans and have a cool weekend. Here's a message from our alternate program. On July 4th, as we in America celebrate our Independence Day, the Armstrong Circle Theater will bring you authentic glimpses of brave people who have lost their independence because they're trapped behind a communist-built wall, but who dare to risk their lives to escape to freedom in the West. Be sure to see A Chapter on Tyranny, Dateline Berlin, one week from tonight on the Armstrong Circle Theater. Now for tonight's cast. Starring Harry Towns as Martin Keller. Betty White as Betty Swan. Special guest star Patricia Collinge as Mrs. Fennell. Also starring Lester Rollins as Ronnie Fennell. Featuring Edgar Staley as Mr. Wells. Peggy Conklin as Miss Sarah Price. Anne Francine as Edna Thompson. Doris Rich as Mrs. Pigeon. And Parker McCormick as Rose Thompson. United States Steel Hour, live from New York. This is Andre Marouche speaking.
The accent is on Archibald MacLeish's The Fall of the City, tomorrow night at 7.30, 6.30 Central Time, on the CBS Television Network.